Hey guys, welcome back to Being Crypto. I'm your host, Jessica Walker, and joining me now, I have Bobby Ong from CoinGecko. Now we're going to touch on all things how to Bitcoin and also pull in some of his predictions from 2021 that actually turned out to be quite accurate. So Bobby, thank you so much for joining me on the line today. Yeah, pleasure to be on the show. And great to have you here and what an interesting time to be talking because I think everyone who's watching the crypto markets avidly at the moment is really surprised that despite March typically being quite a bearish month, we're still seeing some very bullish price patterns. And I know that CoinGecko has recently released a book, How to Bitcoin. Are you still seeing quite a lot of new people look to enter the space? Yeah, I think if you asked me this question a few months ago, whether the retail market is in, I would say that the, the answer is no. But uh, right now, at this point in time, in this current cycle, um, yeah, we are definitely seeing a lot of new people uh, coming into the crypto space and looking at uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the many altcoins that are trading in the market. Um, yeah, we are hitting record all-time high numbers on our website at CoinGecko. Uh, the numbers that we are seeing right now has surpassed the previous peak in uh 20, late 2017, early 2018. So that's definitely a good sign that a lot of new people are coming in. I would say that this current bull uh, cycle is really institutional driven in a sense that uh, it's being uh, propped up by people, American com listed companies buying up Bitcoin, such as Tesla buying a, a $1.5 billion worth, uh, Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy buying like billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. I think he's almost accumulated 100,000 Bitcoins and the other many other firms in, in US buying up uh, and that sort of has like sustained buying pressure from these companies. And do you think there's more Fortune 100 companies that are still accumulating Bitcoin that maybe we're just not hearing about right now? For sure, yeah. There are, I'm sure there are a lot of other companies that are sort of accumulating Bitcoin right now and they haven't announced it yet because they haven't completed their accumulation yet. Uh, they would normally only announce once they have uh, completed their purchases. So I think it's just a matter of time in the next couple of months, we'll see more companies announcing. Uh, every time the price goes, Bitcoin price goes below $50,000, we are seeing sustained buying pressure on uh, Coinbase, which is the preferred exchange of choice uh, for US companies. So there's a lot of institutional buying pressure coming from the US and that's kind of like the main uh, driver of the cycle this time around. Really interesting. And I also wanted to ask, because something that we did see early on this week was uh, from the US government, we saw Joe Biden announce potentially a $1.9 billion stimulus package. And since then, there was a lot of bullish Bitcoin talk just because of the fact that we were going to see more money injected into the economy. Do you think that's also a reason why we're still seeing some positive upswing for these uh, safe haven, almost uh, cryptocurrency assets like Bitcoin? Yeah, for sure, definitely. This stimulus, this $1.9 trillion worth of uh, stimulus package is, uh, is a huge sum of money. Uh, it's one of the largest stimulus package that has been approved by, by, by the US government. And uh, it's just going to hit the retail guys, uh, most of the Americans uh, in the next few weeks. And once that happens, as you have seen from the previous cycle, that a lot of this uh, cash will go towards the stock market, towards uh, assets like Bitcoin and so on. So uh, I think this will be an interesting buying pressure uh, from the Americans, American retail users in a in a weeks in a weeks to come once the checks have arrived in their bank accounts. Yeah, it's a really interesting one, and it's really interesting to see how it plays out. And I think something that is interesting to kind of pick your brains at a little bit is I did have a look through your thread on Twitter, which you released in December 2020, and it was kind of calling out some of your predictions that you had. And some of them that I have to give you credit for, some of them were kind of very accurate. So one that you said that the DeFi industry was really going to surge and push Ethereum to a new all-time high of 1,500, which we did see in, I think, as early as, as mid-January. What is your expectations for the DeFi? DeFi space then for the rest of this year and also for Ethereum on the back of that? So yeah, I think I think the, big, the, the key driver or key catalyst would be uh, Coinbase IPO sometime in the next couple of months or a few months time. Uh, in the second, on the, on the prediction market that is on FTX, uh, Coinbase is uh, trading around $100 billion in valuation. So that's a huge amount of, uh, for, for a company like Coinbase. And uh, Coinbase is not the only exchange in the market. There are many other competitors uh, centralized and decentralized exchanges. A lot of these decentralized exchanges are DeFi tokens by itself, such as Uniswap, SushiSwap, Curve, Balancer, and so on. So once um, um, Coinbase starts trading on, on the stock market, like, uh, and, we see, and we should see how, how it performs in the first few weeks, uh, which I'm sure it will increase even further. Um, there will be a re-rating of all the DeFi tokens. So whatever that we're seeing right now, uh, it will be 
people will be making comparisons for the full dedicated valuation of all these DeFi tokens of, uh, and centralized exchange tokens such as BNB, FTT, and so on, and compare that against the valuation of Coinbase because that is what the market perceives uh, the value of Coinbase in. And there's no reason why these other tokens should not trade at some sort of a fraction, a uh, higher fraction uh, compared to, to, to Coinbase. That's really interesting. I actually haven't heard it explained in that way before, which is an interesting concept. Now, if we look at uh, NFTs, for example, because one of your other predictions was you're saying that NFTs aren't really going to boom this year. It's going to be more of a two to three year uh, cycle for, for the industry to fully thrive as it has with DeFi. Has that been on target? Because we have seen some huge DeFi auctions already. We saw Jack Dorsey look to auction off a tweet on, on Twitter. Are you surprised at the, the talking point and the craze that we're seeing right now with NFT tokens? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely surprised at the level of interest um, in NFTs right now. Uh, I think one of the key uh, points that I kind of didn't expect was kind of uh, influencers like Jack Dorsey, Mark Cuban, uh, Gary Vee talking about NFTs and pushing this narrative. So what we're seeing is that a lot of um, uh, guys who may not have heard of, uh, who may not have whole cryptocurrencies, who may not hold Bitcoin, who may not hold Ethereum. But I've heard of these uh, influencers talking about NFTs and, and pick their interest about all these things. I think NBA Top Shot as well has kind of uh, galvanized a lot of uh, interest in NFTs. Uh, these are people who may be interested in uh, sports, but may not necessarily be interested in finance or cryptocurrencies. But but because of NBA Top Shot being issued as a blockchain token, NFT token, uh, they were curious and, and this kind of uh, drive the interest in NFT. Uh, but that being said, I, I would say that NFTs at this point, current point in time uh, is pretty much driven by speculation. I think we have um, um, how much further it can go, we don't know. But I think I think um, it will be um, with this 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 sustained interest in NFT is actually very good because it spurs a lot of innovation, a lot of investments in building the key infrastructure in NFTs. So I think this will be good for the eventual. Uh, uh, bull run when it comes to NFT in two to three years time. So I think what we're seeing now is just probably the tip of the iceberg. It may have a small specula uh, speculative flavor to it. Um, how long it will last, I don't know, but um, I, I think there will be a correction at some point. I'm not so sure. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, and then in a couple of years time, it will really take off, I would say. And do you think it's more the concept that will take off rather than some of the price points that we're seeing for some of the uh, auction items are, are very high? And do you think part of that just comes from people that have been in crypto for a long time that maybe have a lot of assets to hold, especially because we are in a bullish, bullish market and really the price points that we're seeing now? Do you think that will stay consistent in the next two to three years? I think some of the older NFT projects like CryptoPunks, uh, Axie Infinity, like they will uh, over time like have um, it has a, it has a huge base of uh, core cryptocurrency collectors, and and over time like because it it survived and didn't die off over time, so it will be more valuable with time. So um, yes, function of um, of of the bull of the bull market. Whenever someone is feeling richer, they would want to spend it on collectible items. It's kind of like a item that you kind of show off to your friends. Like you are the one and only collector of this alien crypto punks or this special NBA top shot moments, for example, that no one else could have. So um, it's kind of things that that really drives, especially during a bullish market. So yes, I agree with your point that that the bullish market definitely has spurred an an interest in in. Uh, whales collecting NFTs and has definitely driven up the price of a lot of these uh, NFTs, especially the OG NFTs, the olden NFTs that have kind of been around in the space for a few years. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with your point there. Um, and so one of the uh, speculation that you did do in uh, December 2020 was actually to do with smaller central banks getting involved in crypto. And obviously, if we look at certain jurisdictions across the United States, uh, Miami is a really good example of the Miami mayor and governor being very proactive when it comes to Bitcoin. Are you expecting this year to be the year that we do see more small central banks and even jurisdictions, maybe even in the US, we see a more pro blockchain and pro crypto approach? I don't think we will see governments buying Bitcoin in this cycle. Uh, this cycle is mainly driven by companies purchasing Bitcoin. So mostly private companies, hedge funds, family offices, uh, public public companies buying it. I think we have reached a stage where uh, fund managers 
uh, have to allocate a small percentage of their portfolio into Bitcoin. If they're not doing that, then their LPs will be asking them, what are you doing? Are you not looking at Bitcoin as an asset class? Why are you not allocating a small percentage of the portfolio to Bitcoin? So this narrative has changed. And uh, this wasn't a, a narrative that was around like a few years ago. Uh, back then, nobody would ever talk about uh, the institutions coming in, but the institutions are finally here. So I think this will play out this, this cycle uh, in the next one year. Uh, I don't think the governments are coming in. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy that the, uh, uh, Miami's mayor is looking into it and, and talking about it. But I think it'll take some time before they could sort of order the regulatory red tapes to kind of accept, uh, have Bitcoin on their balance sheet. But I think the next cycle will be interesting, right? So once central bank digital currency come out and I think other central banks will look into it, uh, once Bitcoin kind of have its, uh, it builds its, a, a, a more solid foundation, I think central banks might start looking into, into holding uh, Bitcoin and maybe some other potential cryptocurrencies on their balance sheet, just like how they are holding gold on their, on their balance sheet right now. So um, I think it's just, I don't think it's a cycle. It's probably the next cycle in the next four, four years or so, but, but I think that's definitely coming. And if we get to a point where we do see governments add Bitcoin to their balance sheet, would you expect to see more of a st stable price from the asset just because uh, it has been renowned for its volatility? Would you expect to see a kind of a flattening of a curve uh, in order for that to be justified by, by government? Um, it's hard to say. Uh, it's really hard to I mean, the, the, the narrative was that we've been told is that Bitcoin matures, the volatility would probably reduce and price would be stable. But I think so far till now, we haven't really seen that happening. If anything, the price is as volatile as what it was previously in previous, year, in previous years. So I don't really know if we'll ever reach a stage where Bitcoin price will be very volatile, maybe many years, many, many years from now, but I don't think that will be the case in the near future. It might just be that we get more used to the volatility, <laughs> that it seems more relaxed now. Uh, and out of interest, do you have a prediction <laughs> for, for the asset uh, throughout the rest of 2021? So like my prediction for the rest of the other cryptocurrencies this year? Yes. Um, yeah, I would say that uh, Bitcoin would be the main driver, mainly driven by institutions. And then the others would be, I mean, a lot of, a lot of cryptocurrencies are sort of, uh, it's very, they are very correlated with Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin price goes up, then the others will go up as well. Normally we have a higher volatility. What this means is that uh, when it goes up, the altcoins will go up. Rate. And when it goes down, it goes down at a higher rate. So you lose more on holding out coins. Um, I would expect to see Bitcoin dominance uh, going down as the uh, in the coming months. Uh, what this means is that out coins will probably uh, outperform. Uh, but it's hard to say. I mean, um, this this cycle is a very Bitcoin driven cycle. So 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 uh, I guess I guess that's that's it. Yeah. I mean, but I, what I would say is that a lot of things will be. I think it will be driven by. DeFi tokens, so people would start seeing which tokens um, have real users, have uh, accumulate fees, and compare that against maybe some of the layer one chains, uh, zombie chains, or uh, blockchains that are not used by others, but for some reason have very high market capitalization. So I would say that that people will start being aware of uh, the pros and cons of certain tokens, certain, certain blockchains, and then start seeing, and then there will be a re-rating, and then people start comparing it against real-world assets, especially among the DeFi tokens, uh, just like the Coinbase example that I talked about earlier. Such an exciting time. And now, just finally, Bobby, I would love for you just to, in reference to the How to Bitcoin book that you've released, just maybe three bullet points for new users that are watching this interview that are looking to get some more information when it comes to storing their own own Bitcoin or how to get involved. What three points would you give to, to newbies that have entered so far this year? Yeah, so recently, uh, a few weeks ago, like we published our new, uh, a new book called How to Bitcoin. And you can get it on the on the CoinGecko page. So it, this book basically is a beginner's guide for someone who would like to get started with Bitcoin. And uh, I, I would say that this was kind of accumulated knowledge from all the things that we have learned so far. Uh, for someone beginner, for someone new trying to get into Bitcoin, it's really confusing. And what I always tell these guys, everyone who, who's new, is that uh, always take the opportunity to learn because knowledge is something that belongs to you and, and no one can take that away from you. So it's very important that you take the effort to learn it because if you don't learn it, uh, it's very hard to understand what is going on and to tell what is the truth from uh, fake news, for example. Second thing is um, you want to probably, uh, a lot of people will be asking you to buy all kinds of uh, weird altcoin tokens, but uh, I would say that Bitcoin is probably the, the grandfather of them all and all the tokens sort of uh, correlated with Bitcoin. So if you want to have an, a single asset exposure, like Bitcoin is the asset that you want to hold. And, and uh, until you understand 
the space further, you might not want to consider looking at the others because you should have Bitcoin uh, to some extent. Um, one, one advice that I would give everyone is that you could probably uh, look at dollar cost averaging instead of buying the entire amount that you want to buy. You might want to consider uh, buying it across uh, a period of time. So what I always tell people is that look at your net wealth and decide by yourself like how many percentage of your net worth that you want to allocate to Bitcoin. It could be 1%, 2%, 5%, 10%. It doesn't really matter, right? But uh, as long as you have a number in mind, and let's say that 10%, if you allocate, decide to choose like 2% of your net wealth, uh, and that would be $10,000, you could decide to allocate this $10,000 and buy dollar cost average it over a period of 10 months by buying $1,000 worth of Bitcoin on Coinbase for the next 10 months. And over time, you kind of have an average entry price that is that is uh, suitable, that is not, you may not know, maybe you're buying a peak or you're buying the low, but but you don't take that, that sort of gamble, I would say. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. You've given our viewers so much to take away there. So I'm sure they're really appreciative. Thank you so much for your time today, Bobby. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That's all for myself and Bobby from Being Crypto. If you did like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more content like this.